Okay, so we're going to do a demonstration on Lupin. So let me go to my overhead camera and come down here. And I've got a, just a little um, eight and a half by 11 sheet of scrapbooking paper that I found that's not too busy of a background. And I'm going to put out some colors here. Okay, so our leaf colors, I'm going to put some classic green out and some daffodil yellow. Okay, so I've got some wicker white out and some cobalt, a little bit of violet pansy, so and I'm gonna put some magenta out as well. And I've got some neon purple also. So I thought that might look kind of interesting on there too. Okay, so we've got quite a few colors to work with here. So I've got classic green and yellow. And this daffodil yellow, wicker white, cobalt, violet pansy, magenta, and some neon purple. And I'm going to be working with a number 10 flat. Okay, so... Um, All right, so I'm going to double load my brush with, I got, I picked up all classic green and then I'm going to side load, side stroke, some daffodil yellow. Okay, so these are a brighter, more of a spring flower, so they're a little bit brighter in color and the greenery is not um, dark. It's fairly pale colored. Okay, all right, so I'm going to set that over here and let's bring this twist it just a little bit more. There we go. Okay. Not sure why that's so dark. All right. So, um, first of all, I'm going to do a, a few stems. Okay. So we're going to pull up on the chisel. Okay. We'll have three for fun here. Okay. So we'll have three right there, three main stems, and then off of those, so the flowers are pretty tall and spiky, and um, then the, the, the flower stems and then the flower heads tend to sit up high. And so the, um, the leaves are kind of a five-pointed umbrella shape, so you come out and in. Let me come down a little closer so you can see that. I'm going to make my light just a little bit brighter. There we go. Okay. That's a little better. Okay, so. So everything comes from a point. Like I said, it's kind of umbrella shape. Now you can go out and then slide back in like that. Or if that's a challenge, then do like a daisy stroke and just push and slide into the center. Okay. Either one of those will work. All right. So that's, whoops, a little too much. Come over here. So you come to the point and then push and stand back up to the center, okay? There we go. Okay, and then the stem actually comes from the from behind it, and so I'm going to pull a stem out like this, and we're going to do some smaller ones here. There 
There we go. So if you live near the coast and these are um, kind of northeast and northwest coast, I think there's some in Florida, but I've not seen them near the ocean. But they like to grow in kind of rocky coastlines or near rivers and streams. I've seen them in the mountains as well, so they look really pretty. They just grow right up out of the rocks. Okay, so we do more, so a few short, ah, I can't talk, a few shorter ones up here. Okay, so you can, like I said, do them single stroked, so you can pull them like that. Or you can do the double strokes, okay? All right. And then if you do a side, it's good to not always have them all facing you. So it's a good idea to do some side ones. Maybe they all come to this point here. Okay, and then you can do some shorter ones in front so that it looks like you're looking at it from the side. Okay. And then just pull your stem back down and do one more here. Let's bring it out this way. If you do some petals on a flower shorter, then it looks like they're turned or tipped. And so the same thing goes for this particular type of leaf. Okay. Now, to finish these leaves off, it looks really good if you come in to the center. Like, I'm not happy with this one right here. There we go. If you come to the center and just do a little curve right in there in the middle. And I've seen some really cool pictures where when it's rained or dew happens, um, it will puddle right in the middle of those little areas. Okay, so we're coming back out just a little bit here and cleaning that brush. Now I'm gonna come and get some of my pretty colors here. So let's start with some blue and white. I'm gonna get white and come over here next to my blue. This is cobalt. Okay. And so the tips I'm going to come up here with these colors. We're going to start at the base and work our way up to the tips, okay? So they come out, <clears throat> they come out like this, and you can either push and stand up like that, all right? Or you can slide out and make a curve back, all right? I like to leave them this way because it leaves the light color to the top, okay? Because what happens is these are kind of two-sided um, petals. They have a shorter piece right here that comes down like that. I don't want my hand to get in the way. It's going to get in the way there. So it comes back from the top. Almost like a snapdragon, but not quite as frilly. All right. So... That's the basic stroke. Now, if you were to kind of pick up maybe a little bit of pink in here on that white edge, right? And you can do right another one up here at the top. So it's looking like it's facing you. Mm -hmm. 
And then we can start by doing another row here, here. So they kind of go around the stem. Grab some of that pink and stand it up. Oops. Right there. Now, um, I'm going to get this cobalt and then some purple. Since I want you to see all these different colors you can do. So if you did them with the dark purple strokes like that, they gradually get shorter. Side load a little bit of white on that purple. And then push and lift it back. All right, now as we go up, I'm going to do a few with the corner right in here. There we go. Now as we go up, they're going to get tighter and they're going to get more close to the stem. And get a little bit of white in there. Having trouble with my brush here. There we go. I'm not happy with this one, so I want to restroke this because I did it. No, I did it backwards. There we go. There. All right, so I'm going to stop it on, on that one. I'm going to come back to my blue and white here. And I want to come just a little bit wider. There we go. Because they have to get narrower as they come. So I was noticing that I wasn't doing a good job of that. And I don't want my hand to get in the way. There we go. All right, so they've got those top sided. little buds that come down. All right, now let's wipe this brush off and I'm going to load it with magenta and white. Okay, because I've seen some pink ones too and they look very pretty. All right, so here we're going to come there. So make sure you do the bottom ones wide so that then you can get narrower as you go. There we go. Oops, picked up some of that blue. That's kind of pretty. So the whites on the inside, pinks on the outside, you stroke down with a slight curve and stand up. All right. And flip the brush over, come to the top, and do its little matched pair right there. Okay. <laughs> I 
Okay, so you're making smaller strokes as you go up. I'm adding a few here so it looks like you're facing some. And now I'm going to get a little bit of blue cobalt on my white with this. It's just kind of fun to pick. This would make a really pretty patriotic pick painting, wouldn't it? Red, white, and blue. Pink, white, and blue. <laughs> Okay, now um, I'm going to wipe this brush off and I'm going to go back to my purple. I'm going to get some purple and white. Okay, and we'll do this shorter one right here. So we're going to come right over our leaves now that those are dry and come right in there. So this is violet pansy and white. Okay, so they kind of look like really skinny butterflies. And do some on this side. Short little strokes so it looks like you're facing them. It gives it a more rounded look. I'm going to shorten my strokes on this next layer. Okay, and we'll just do really short before they when you get closer to the top, they're not opened all the way, so they're more like a singular petal. And they come down like this. And don't forget one in the middle from time to time. Okay. All right, so there we have a nice little stack. Now, what I want to do for the tops is they get really um, close and bunched up at the top, kind of like broccoli. <laughs> and so I'm going to switch now to a six flap. And I'm going to pick up the green. So I'm getting the classic green and I'm going to come side load some white. on one edge. Okay. And we're going to come right down here to the tops of these and they're really tight little bunches at the top. So with the white up, we're going to pull down short little strokes. Little chisel strokes. This is a six flat. Okay, and I'm going to do that on all three and then I'm going to pick up a little bit of the color in each one and tie those in together. Okay, so the white is up. It's kind of a pale green. Little comma strokes. coming back to the stem, okay? So our stem needs to extend up a little here. Okay, now to tie the colors together um, on the same brush, I'm gonna just side load a little bit of the blue, right, the cobalt here. And we're going to start to stroke some of these into 
the existing petals that we stroked here. And we're going to come right in the middle here because they do have kind of little leaf or stem attachments. All right, so I've just added a little bit of that cobalt to the green. And just short little comma strokes in here in between. Grab a little more of that white. Okay, and just kind of fills in some of those stalks. You can wipe that off and then come get, in this case would be the green and white with magenta. So I'm going to get a little magenta on that green edge. And we're going to come right in here. A little more white because it's overpowering it. All right, so we got magenta and white. And we're going to come right down into here as well. Just some short little strokes to fill those in. Okay, and then finally the last one. I'm going to get some purple. This is Violet Pansy with the white and the green. You do need some of that green still in there. You don't want to work it in too much though because it will turn brown with the purple. Okay, so there we go with those. Now, last thing I want to do is I'm going to come get some of this neon purple. So I'll clean my six off and I'm going to come, whoops, come get some of this neon purple. And I'm going to add a little few strokes in the purple one. To kind of Brighten up a few of these spaces. And let's see what it looks like in the blue. It's kind of pretty too. Okay. So just a few little sprigs of that here and there. And then they do start to have some small leaves kind of branching off down here, right? So we just pull the same kind of umbrella strokes with the green and yellow right in there. Okay, so just here and there you might put a few smaller leaves. Just to fill it in. Make sure you have enough green though, you don't want them too yellow. There we go. Okay, and there you have um, some lupins in different colors and they make a nice little addition. Now those are the full close-up, right, look to the flowers. You can do very simple little strokes for fields of them where you don't see them completely, so you can just kind of build Um, small strokes out with a smaller brush and a more of an impression, right? Short little strokes just like I showed you with the big brush. They're just not as defined, right? So you can do that as well and then you add 
the leaves. around okay so you could do fields of these and I have actually done that in one of my downloadable classes available in some Mount Rainier painting lesson where we did a field of lupins in front of Mount Rainier and that was fun from the last trip that I took out to Washington. <laughs> so who knows, maybe I'll find something on this trip that'll be fun to paint for all of you next time. Okay, so there's our lupins, and I hope you get, look for an opportunity to incorporate those into your next project.